Cause I'm the data guy, making bikes fly high, diving deep into the data, reaching for the sky, from ETLs to data lakes and pipelines that don't break. Tune in, hang on, and let's make data great. Hey y'all, so today I wanted to make a video on DBT. And the reason I want to do that is because I talk all the time about how you can use Cosmos to manage your DBT workflows. But I realized I've never actually talked about DBT, what it is, um, how you use it, what it's used for, um, or really anything about it um, on this channel. So I figured today I'm going to take a deep dive into DBT, talk about what it does, some of the typical use cases, just so you have an idea of, hey, maybe this is where I can fit DBT into my existing workflows. This seems super useful. I'm going to start incorporating it. Um, and if you do decide on DBT, uh, definitely check out Cosmos um, because it's basically you get DBT cloud for free. Uh, but I digress. Today is all about DBT. Um, and so no matter if you're in the data sphere or even a data sphere, Jason, you probably heard of DBT. Um, and so what you might not know is that it's actually short for data build tool, which I didn't know before I started uh, researching for this video. Um, and it's an open source tool. So it, it is open source, even though some it, it, there's yeah, it's just open source. It's not Apache, but it is uh, open source. Not a lot of people I think that contribute to it because um, it's not super complex other than just DBT labs, but it is an open source tool. So you can, you know, take it and, and adapt it for whatever use case you want. Um, and essentially what it is, it's just a way for you to, it's kind of like a, a template essentially for your data analysts or data engineers to transform and model your data within your data warehouse. Um, so think of it like it'll take a series of anal uh, SQL queries that you'll write in a structured DBT script and then turn them into something that's, you know, manageable and production ready. So instead of, you know, me having to run 30 different SQL queries uh, in a sequence to generate, you know, a certain slice of a table that I want, I can just run a DBT workflow uh, that builds that in a structured manner because it's, you know, done it a million times before. Um, so it takes those SQL queries makes them more manageable, makes them production ready, um, and just eliminates a lot of the you know manual processes there around actually querying your data. Um, so if you're used to working with Airflow, it's a pretty similar process. Um, and I'll switch over into kind of more code view in a second. I just wanted to use the beautiful visuals on the DBT website to kind of illustrate, you know, you have this similar graph view to a DAG, you're defining steps in a sequence using a DBT model format. So it is very similar to writing a DAG. Um, so, if you're coming from Airflow, which I imagine you might, if you're on the channel, um, you will be very familiar with some of the concepts in here. And so the way it works is you'll let me actually switch over to an example of it so you can see how it works. So what models are, are basically a series of SQL transformations that are structured, you know, in kind of a scheduled sequential way. Um, so similar to an Airflow DAG, you know, you have many different tasks within DBT, you'll have many different steps of your model. Um, so you can see here, if we look at this model, it's basically just a series of SQL statements. So, you know, first we're selecting orders, we're selecting payments, um, and then uh, appending them, making sure, you know, by, by payment methods, summing them, grouping them by group ID, um, and then just adding in all of them into a final payment methods uh, a customer data table, just to show, you know, what, how each customer paid and, you know, what they paid. Uh, and so it's not super complex, super groundbreaking. Um, and that's kind of the point. It is meant to be something that's simple to write, but you can generate a lot of complexity around this. Um, you know, these models can reference other models. So I could have, you know, as part of this workflow, maybe it actually calls out to another model that generates me the total amount because that isn't implicitly in there um, for each customer. And so what's really cool about dbt um and so why dbt has become so popular is it can run these transformations in only any 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 kind of data warehouse uh, there's no need for an intermediary data pipeline where you bring the data out ingest it to run the transformations and then load it back in so you're order organizing your transformations only as sql code dbt will orchestrate the job so that they you know don't run over each other um, and then it'll turn them directly into you know tables and views you can do analytics and transformations within your warehouse and not have to rely on bringing it out to an external service which it ends up being much cheaper obviously than actually paying um, to you know the compute to bring it out and then transform it somewhere externally um, and so some of the extra features you get around this um, you know number one version controlling uh, being able to say hey you know, this is the one version of a query 
Um, you can also see, you know, logs of what's happening within each of your uh, DBT job runs. Um, so you get visibility that way and actually what's happening. Um, you can have macros that you can reference, you know, across your SQL statements. Um, and you can also define, hey, you know, I want my customer data to be in this schema. Um, and it's actually, this will actually generate a description. So here you set the version number um, and it will talk about, hey, these are the, you know, describe the data for me. Um, use, so this will, you know, you can see where it says um, order ID. What this will do is test, make sure it's unique, make sure it's not null. And then at the end, this will compile a description for the table automatically. So you get automatic documentation for your code which makes it much easier to understand and thus maintain um, because you know anyone that's coming in can quickly and easily understand what that data is, what it's referencing, where it came from uh, without needing to rely on hey, hitting you up and saying, yo, data engineer, what's going on with my code, bro? Um, and then you can also, so that's what I was showing here with, um, with macros. You can have, you know, maybe SQL commands that you're running many, many times. And so you can say drop table.sql have all the extra logic here saying you know, only if it exists, blah, 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 making sure it, uh, you know, drops properly. But all you have to do is just reference the drop table, uh, table action. Um, so it's acts as kind of like a shortcut uh, for C certain SQL commands that you might want to use. Uh, so a lot of, or not, not a lot of, but a, not, a, all the key features you need to really manage these kind of queries in production um, and have all that documentation, have all that logging, have all the tracing um, that you need to actually understand, hey, you know, what happened in this code? Who wrote it? What's what's it generating? What's it doing? Um, and so what is DBT used for? So, you know, we know what it does, but what do people actually use it for in production? And so I figured what better way to show what people are doing with DBT than uh, by hearing about it for themselves from the DBT website. Um, so one example we have here uh, is DBT uh, code 42. Um, so right here, being able to restore something. So having those version control DBT models saying, all right, this DBT model failed. I want to be able to do version control, go back um, and maintain the models that are actually, let's see what they're powering. They are powering, uh, enabling customers to identify data leaks, source code. So data there has to be of high quality um, and it needs to be surfaced quickly so that people know, you know, hey, this leak has been identified um, and so, DBT's data tracing and the ability to actually track, you know, what changes, what happened there, where did that data go to, um, can, you know, help them identify those issues further. Um, you know, another, it, and so I just wanted to show this to say, hey, you know, DBT is really used for things like uh, data transformation. It's, I'd say one of the primary use cases um, is that you're sort of transforming raw data into a structured, more analytical friendly format um, and kind of acting as the bridge between, you know, hey, here's your raw data, getting into a format that your BI tools can actually ingest to make use of. Um, so it's, you know, doing data transformation, data modeling, data validation, you know, with some of those tests uh, and collaboration to, you know, allow multiple people to work on the same model. Um, so, you know, your data engineers can build uh, DBT models to power your data analyst workloads. Uh, so they don't actually have to, you know, have that manual interaction. It can all be governed by code um, and code doesn't get mad. So it's a great way to solve any kind of uh, relationship problems there. Um, so if you're looking for a tool that is going to streamline your data transformation, uh, your modeling capabilities, and you're comfortable with SQL, that's a key, key part. If you're not super, super comfortable with SQL and a little bit of Jinja templating, because that's basically what this is, uh, might not be for you. But if you are, which I assume you probably are, uh, it could be an addition, excellent addition to your data stack. Um, and it works really well when used in conjunctions of tools like Airflow, because then instead of, you know, as you saw it, to go access those logs, I have to go in there um, and actually, you know, open the files, pull them out. There's not really a UI there to monitor your DBT workflows. Um, so that's where Airflow can come in as a layer on top of DBT um, that will actually power your DBT workflows, um, but also allow you to see them visualized within the Airflow UI. Um, so total, and this is also totally free, right? Airflow is open source. Um, so this is an open source project, open source package Cosmos here. Um, and that way you don't have to pay for DBT cloud, which is kind of DBT's ID, cloud IDE kind of thing um, for managing DBT. You know, and that's how they get paid. Uh, and there's some controversial pricing plans, but I digress. Um, so 
I recommend using airflow, especially if you're just starting out to keep costs low. Um, and you'll see with the setup here, it's very intuitive. You know, your DBT uh, models will live within your airflow directory and you don't really manage it. There's not a ton of airflow code you need to write on top of it to actually access those models. So super cool tooling. Um, I just had to make a plug for it because it is one of my favorite um, airflow projects. Um, and that is all I have for you today. Um, so if you like this video, please consider liking and subscribing. Um, if you have any video you'd like to see in the future, drop it in the comments um, and I will toss it on the schedule. Um, and without further ado, data guy out. Peace.